Hey everybody, it's Keith. I got a question in the queue was asking about trunking and 802.1Q and I think a lot of people, especially beginning with Cisco networking, are, uh, are interested in the topic. So let me take a moment and explain exactly the problem and then what trunking does as a solution to that problem. Here we have four PCs. We're going to give them numbers and I'm going to use blue for this. We'll give this guy PC number one, PC number two, PC number three and PC number four. We also have switch one and two there already labeled and this beautiful airplane which pay attention it'll come in handy during the discussion. Then we have uh, switch one switch two we'll say they're connected and we have port FA 0 slash 24 here and we use 0 slash 24 there too. Don't have to use the same port number but we will for convenience sake. The PCs are tied into this switch with straight through cables as you well know and let's say um, that these are all going to port 1, 2, 3, and 4. So PC 1 is going to port 1 on the switch, PC 2 goes to port 2, and 3 goes to 3 and 4 goes to 4. Now when we connect a PC to a switch that switch port, I'm going to go ahead and circle them right here, that switch port is going to be assigned as an access port. The command on a 3560 for example would be switch port mode access and then we would assign it to a specific VLAN, switch port access VLAN X. So let's say we assign this red port here, port 3, to VLAN 2. So it says switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 2, poof, it's now a member of VLAN 2 and the PC, just because that's where it's connected, is part of that VLAN, that broadcast domain. Then over here on switch 1, we have this port here, this is port 1 that PC1 is connected into on the switch 1 and let's also assign that to VLAN 2. Again the command would be switch port mode access, now it's an access port, and then switch port access VLAN 2, now it's a member of VLAN 2. So this PC and this PC are both members of VLAN 2 on two separate switches. Now we're going to change the rules, we're going to kick up the ante a little bit. Let's say we have PC2, I'm going to use a different color, slightly different color. Let me get a really different color, let me take that color off. And that is PC2, I'll put him back on there. And let's get maybe green, that's distinct enough. So let's take this port right here and we'll assign that port as an access port in VLAN 3. We'll do the same thing over here, VLAN 3. So now we have a VLAN, two VLANs on both switches, but if PC1 and PC2 need to talk to each other, there's a little bit of a challenge. Let's take a look at that. Let's say PC1 has the IP address of 10.0.0.1 and PC3 has 10.0.0.3. Three. There we go. And let's say PC4, because it's on a different VLAN, we're going to give them a completely different IP addressing space as well. Let's say it's 20.0.0.4 for PC4. And just take a guess with me. You got it. 20.0.0.2 for PC2. So now let's talk about how what the problem is. If this PC here sends a broadcast out, that broadcast, because it's in a VLAN, should go to every single other device in that same VLAN. So the broadcast comes in to the switch and the switch has this cable to the other side, but which VLAN do we assign this port to? Do we make it an access port for VLAN 2? That would work fine for VLAN 2 users, but it wouldn't work fine for VLAN 3 users. Or do we assign these ports to VLAN 3 and make the VLAN 3 users happy because they can communicate but the VLAN 2 users are upset because they can't. The solution is we're going to do with a middle solution that is we're going to create these interfaces and specify these interfaces right here FA24 on both these switches we're going to set them up as trunk ports. A trunk port is expecting to carry the traffic that needs to go across for multiple VLANs. How does it work? It works like a champ. Check this out. What we'll do is we're going to use a technique the airlines use. If a child, oh, here's a little kid right there, little stick figure, he's happy because he gets to ride on an airplane. If a kid is going to be transported across the country or across the nation, whatever, inside of an airplane and he's underage, they have to keep track of him. So the people on the receiving side, the stewardess, they tag him. Literally, they put a big string around, well, on the airlines I fly, they put a big string around their neck with a label and information inside that has information on who this kid is, who the responsible parties are, what the phone numbers are. They tag him. Then when he gets off the plane, they don't just say, hey, have a good luck finding your parents. They make sure that he, by using the tag, he gets to the appropriate parents on the far side. 
and that's how that operates. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same exact technique as far as tagging goes to keep track of broadcasts from VLAN 2 or VLAN 3. And here's how it works. When this PC sends a, and I'll do it in red, when this PC sends a broadcast, it could be an ARP request or anything else, it's received by the switch on this access port. The switch knows it belongs, this broadcast belongs to VLAN 2. Besides forwarding that broadcast to all other ports on this switch, it's also going to forward the broadcast through the trunk because by default all VLANs are allowed on a trunk. So it says, okay, I'm going to forward out this trunk, but before I do, I need to tag it. So what it does, it literally modifies the frame before it hits the wire and it includes a tag. The most important thing you get to get out of this presentation today is that that tag says this frame belongs to VLAN 3. So that's why I did it in color. So we modify the frame. We include a tag that says it belongs to VLAN, th VLAN 2. Excuse me, in this case it's VLAN 2. That frame is received by Switch 2 who looks at that tag and says, oh, this frame belongs to VLAN 2 and as a result it strips off the tag, it no longer needs it and it then forwards it, if it's a broadcast, out to all the access ports that are also a member of VLAN 2. And that way the broadcast gets from this PC on the left, PC1, to PC3 on the right. The same thing would happen if PC2 down here sent a broadcast. Broadcast comes in, Switch 1 knows it belongs for, it's appropriate for VLAN 3. It sends it out the trunk, but before it does, it tags it. Switch 2 receives it, says, oh, this tag says it's for VLAN, in this case, 3. Strips off the tag because it's no longer needed. And then Switch 2 forwards that broadcast out all other ports because that's where broadcasts go to all, all devices associated with the VLAN. So R4 would get it. So the concept of tagging is simply identifying so that the receiving device knows which VLAN it belongs to. Now, as far as 802.1Q or ISL, there are two different methods that we could use to identify or tag a frame. ISL is Cisco's proprietary method called inner switch, inter switch link. It does uh, you know, an encapsulation around the entire frame with the tag information in it. 802.1Q is a standards-based method of tagging. Um, it doesn't actually do encapsulation, but it does surgery, takes the frame, slices it, injects this little tag inside of it and then forwards it. Either way, the frame's going to be a teeny bit bigger than if it didn't have the tagging information. And that, my friends, is how 802.1Q tagging or ISL tagging is used to carry information across this beautiful little trunk link between two Cisco devices, in this case, two switches. Thanks for the question and thanks for listening. Have a great day.